Hello, hi, I am Sandra Pollock from Open Mind Coaching, bringing to you Stop and Be Grateful. And uh, every Friday, I get together with you here to share some reflection on the week and to give thanks, really, for those things that I am particularly happy about, those experiences I've had, and uh, to encourage you to do the same thing. So uh, as you're joining me, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me. Hi, Chris, I can see you there. Great to have you on board. This particular Friday Stop and Be Grateful is the last one for this year, 2016. And um, it's been a really interesting year. Uh, from all points of views, I think um, some people may look back on the year and say, oh my gosh, it's been such a, um, a traumatic year in terms of political out outlook, economic outlook, all sorts of things have been quite interesting this year. Um, hi Dinesh, uh, thanks for joining me. So this year as we reflect, and not only here in the UK, but uh, across the world, it's been quite... Um, uh, tumultuous uh, uh, year, I think, and um, most of us may uh, be surprised at some of the outcomes that we have had uh, politically and economically. And nevertheless, I'm sure that if we all look at our lives, we will see that although those things have, have uh, been quite uh, traumatic uh, and have shaken many people, there are still things in our lives that we can give thanks for. And so um, over the last week or so, I have taken the opportunity to reflect not only on the previous seven days, which is what I usually do, but also looking back over the, over the year and, um, you know, jotting down, as I do in my gratitude journal, jotting down those things that have happened over the year that I'm thankful for. So I'd like to encourage you to do a similar thing, not only reflect on the past seven days, but reflect upon the year and pull out those things that we are grateful for. Now, I know that as human beings, we take a lot for granted, and it's sometimes the small things that we take for granted that actually have the, the biggest impact on our lives. And for some of us, if uh, like me, well, we have been fortunate enough to be um, in good health, uh, through the year, then that is something that we may, uh, you know, skip over and take for granted. But I think we should reflect on that and um, give thanks that we are well. Uh, Ricardo, thank you for joining me. So, um, so one of the things that I am grateful for is is my health. Um, I may have had a cold or something during the year, but in comparison to many people, I am grateful that I am in good health, that I am strong, and this year. Uh, sees me coming to the end of it in good health. So I'm grateful for that. So I've written down a few things. But what I'd like to do is, to, you know, what are you grateful for? You know, you can comment on the comments box and say the things that you are grateful for as you reflect on um, the year. And another thing is for peace and safety, relative peace and safety, where I live. I know in some countries that is not... Um, as uh, it's not as peaceful as we may be here, but still I am grateful that um, <clears throat> that I'm alive and safe. So those things. I was reflecting on um, the goals that I started with at the beginning of 2016. And like many um, people, I tend to reflect and uh, plan forward at the beginning of the year. And I will be doing that again. Um, as we uh, venture into 2017. But as I looked um, at some of the, the goals that I put down for my year, but um, for, the, for this year, but also long-term goals, that I, I have a, a vision board, which I, um, I stick up, it's um, up in my office, and I uh, look at that, and I, um, you know, endeavor to uh, make those things happen. And I've, as I've reflected on my vision board for business, I've realized that this year has um, seen quite a few things happen that I put there at the beginning of the year. And one of those things is to build my network. Um, and uh, this year I have been fortunate enough to come across a franchise, which is a network franchise for women, and I've been able to to uh, to join that 
and also uh, not only to to have one but I have two so I am a co-leader at two um, Shakti women groups uh, one in Leicester and one in Derby so you know that as I reflect on my long-term goals I think oh wow that that's a big one really for me because in terms of um, having and building a network where I support people in their personal development, in their career development, their business development. Good morning, James. Thanks for joining me. Good morning, Jane Cords as well. Thanks for joining me. So as I reflect on my life um, goals and my, my annual goals, the goals for this year, and one should lead to another, we all should have our life goals, things that we would really like to achieve. It could be... <clears throat> given maybe the next five years or it could be as i say lifetime goals you don't necessarily have a, a, a specific date and time although you should but things that you would really like to do in your lifetime and then you have your year your annual goals your yearly goals and those should tap into your life goals so you should be able to look at your your goals for the year and connect them with your your passion, your vision, those things that you really want to achieve in your life. And you should be able to see how you're working towards that. So as I've reflected on my life goals and uh, my annual goals, I'm really chuffed to see that one of the big things that's uh, starting and building a network, a specific uh, personal development network, that actually happened. And that has that happened in such a surprising and I'd say miraculous way that I wasn't even expecting it. And I'm, maybe I'll tell you about that at another time. But looking back at my goals, I am really pleased that I am on my way to achieving that. And I'm thankful to uh, all of the people around me that have helped that to happen um, and to take place. So I'm on that journey. Rahana, thank you for joining me. Glad to see you on board. So I am reflecting not only on my last seven days, but as this is the last I'll stop and be grateful for this year. I'm reflecting on um, the things that I've achieved over the years, the things that I'm really grateful for. And as I woke up this morning, I thought about what am I going to talk about? Obviously, I had this as well, but I usually like to be um, flexible so that if something else comes up, I, I sort of incorporate that or change my plans. So the thing that struck me this morning was this question... Um, and I'm asking myself, so I'm going to share it with you. Um, what What are the things that you would say that you are that you've learnt through this year? What have you learnt this year? Um, what have been the biggest learning areas for you this year? Um, and how have you learnt? And how have you allowed that learning, that experience? to um, help you prepare to go into this new year to achieve even more. So I, I think for me, if I start to answer that question, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned this year is a, around consistency. Um, just to be consistent, whatever it is that you want to do to change, to um, to acquire in your life, the only way that you're going to do that is to be consistent. So when you decide that you are going to, um, <clears throat> for example, these um, these live broadcasts that I that I do on a Monday and a Friday, I decided um, that I was going to share and to use the opportunity to just take people with me on my journey and that's yes yeah, a great idea to come up with but then how often am I going to do it that was the next thing I had to decide on and then not only that <clears throat> excuse me I had to do it every single week uh, and so I had to really look at my levels of consistency uh, so that, I, uh, for me, has been one of the biggest learning points. Because some mornings, I will admit that I get up and I think, oh, do I have to do this? I don't want to do it. I want to do something else or I want to stay in my bed a bit longer. But I have made a commitment to myself. And I must admit that I have grown so much by just being consistent, just keeping my word to myself. And um, keeping your word to yourself is one of the foundations of um, building self-esteem and self-confidence. Because if you can't trust yourself, then 
you can't trust anybody else and then we hold ourselves back from giving from sharing who we are because we don't trust ourselves and we don't want to let other people down so consistency for me has been a really biggie so i've got some uh some additional joiners hi rupal and hi kamlesh lovely to have you here uh joining me so yeah so it's about for me it's learning consistency that has been one of the bigger things in the year and so those of you who are here and you have joined me every week every Monday and every Friday I want to say thank you because you've helped me with my consistency because I know that I have my regulars and I know that I have those people who can't always join me in the live sessions but they they watch later on that has helped me to say, right, I have made a commitment to myself, and through making a commitment to myself, I've made a commitment to other people, so I now have to do this. So consistency has been one of my big learning points. The other learning point I would say, and this is this has sort of come up, oh, my phone has just snapped out of its holder, so I'm just gonna adjust it, so you'll, oops, oh, there you go, okay. Um, hopefully I've still got you. Yes. So one of the other learning points, and this has come up um, sort of uh, the latter probably four to six months of this year, is around um, building good habits. Now I know about this and I've spoken about this, but in my own development as I grow and change my behaviours to achieve the things that I want to achieve in my own life and to grow in the areas I want to grow in my own life, building habits. Now consistency will help you to build good habits, um, but realising that success in whatever area of our lives that we want to achieve success in, it only comes through developing good habits. Now, good habits may, you may think, well, good habits, we think of, of bad habits, which we tend to pick up really, really easily. And then when we're thinking about changing those bad habits, it seems quite difficult. But, you know, we, we acquire good habits all the time. If we're learning a new skill, the only way we learn to do um, master that new skill is creating the habit of doing it again and again, improving how we do it, do it again and again and improving all the time. And that is a habit. It's just in an area we don't always see as a habit. So if you want to learn to play the piano, you want to learn to play the guitar, you want to learn to, you know, write reports better, you want to Im improve your blogging. These are all good habits because they are skills that we need to learn, we need to pick up, we need to learn about. We, le we need to learn to take on those, those tasks and those actions and then we need to repeat, 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 repeat and that's a habit and that's all really a habit is. Um, so for me it's been around um, uh, extending, expanding my meditation time. Uh, many of you know that I, I meditate every day, the f first thing I do in the morning. Um, and uh, the last thing I do in the evening. Uh, but I've added some other practices to that uh, to help me um, prepare for my day more so. So I, um, although I do a, a gratitude diary every day, one of the, the things that I have taken on is to, in the morning, find 10 things that I am grateful for. So this is before I go into the day. So I list 10 things that I'm grateful for. And I need to make them different things every day. So not the same things all the time. So my learning in doing that has helped me to expand how and where I see my life. Because... Um, the mindset we have is the, the, the view from which we see our lives. So unless we're beginning to do things to change our mindset, we will always see our lives in the same way and not see our ability to grow and to change and expand in our lives. So for me, taking on this 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 um, this new idea of starting the day after my meditation, starting the day with listing the things that I'm grateful for, that has helped me to go into my day with a much more positive frame of mind. And yes, even I need an even more positive frame of mind, those of you who know me well. Um, a, a more positive frame of mind, but a frame of mind that helps me to see what I can achieve. Um, and that has changed uh, my outlook 
a lot. I mean, there's still challenges. We all have challenges. And the last thing I would want anyone um, that sees these things, um, these broadcasts to assume is that I don't have any challenges. Actually, yes, I do. I have lots of challenges. And I guess my way of working to overcome them is by uh, doing the things that I encourage you to do because I'm working on those things myself. Um, so just to share that with you, um, how I am reflecting on um, the last 12 months and pulling out from that the things I'm grateful for, and I'm going to share some of those, but also what has been the, the two if you can only think of one main one, then think of one main one. But what have, have been the main lessons that you have learned from this year? And how have you ha allowed that learning to help you improve and change your life? So just going through quickly the things, the main things that I am grateful for for this year is health. I've already said that. Um, to my immediate and extended family, having people around to uh, share with, celebrate with, and to give and appreciate love um, with. I've already shared um, about achieving uh, or starting the achievement on one of my uh, goals for business, and that's around uh, building my network and those sorts of things. Um, a big one for me this year um, was I've many of many people don't know this, but um, I've I have um, been in a court case battle with a big organisation um, over the last three years, and that's really around the fact that I created a program that this organisation felt that they wanted, and instead of um, uh, like most sensible organizations um saying how can we can we buy this off you or can we can we um you know can we find another way of working with it because we think it's good they decided that they wanted to take it off me well anyone who knows me knows that i am um quite tenacious and uh i didn't let that happen so thankfully they decided to drop it i mean they 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 went all the way to taking it to court but i think that that was so that they could um bully me and to scare me i don't scare um, so they had to give it up. So that, that was a win for me. So that's a really big thing. The lesson from that is whatever you have that's yours, fight for it. If you've been blessed with it, you've created it. It's a skill that you have. It's a passion that you have and you do it well. Fight for what is yours. Don't just let people walk in and take away. If, if it's good and you want to sell it and they give you a good price for it and you're happy with that, then go, go for that. But never let anyone take away what is yours. So that is a really big one. And I want to give thanks to those people who have stood by me and supported me because when you're going through something big like that a lot of people get scared because you may be a smaller organization than this one that's trying to um, bully you out of giving up what's yours some people get scared and run away other people stick with you and i am grateful for those people who stuck with me through this and helped me so i am um i am grateful i am grateful it's all over and i'm grateful that i still have the program which has helped hundreds of women, this program that I still have is mine and I am glad for those who stood with me. Um, so I give thanks for that outcome. So what else am I thankful for? Um, I'm sure like me, you have so many, you could go on list and list and list. Something that I um, always wanted to do, I always wanted to do a master's um, and I uh, applied uh, for um, uh, to do a master's uh, and I got in and I'm I'm surprised and maybe I shouldn't be surprised but I guess I'm surprised because I haven't done an, an awful lot of academic study for a long time so I, I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to prove my my skills and my ability but I did so um, so I have got a place on a master's um, but the next well and the next thing is I just need to find the funding so those of you who um who pray then you know just pray that I that I get to find the funding but that is a big achievement for me I'm so so chuffed um I have a number of programs running this year 
um, uh, a big one, a uh, management one in um, Peterborough, which is um, is really uh, ramping up now. And we're looking forward to, to that, achieving great things in the new year. And I could go on and on and on, um, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to say is I hope that that has encouraged you to um, reflect on your year identify those great things that have happened that you're truly thankful for and stop and just give thanks if thank you is the only thing you can say then that is that is a lot so do say that um and you know really it's about learning we're on a journey to learn and to to discover our uh, greatness how awesome we are and we are so the more that we can grow within ourselves um, the better we are and the more we have to give to the people around us. Um, I will, in on my next one, talk about, um, you know, the things that I am looking forward to achieving in the new year. I usually take uh, a couple of weeks to reflect on um, the things that I want to really work on in the new year. And I, I try not to do that in a rush. I do that over a two-week period because I look at uh between seven and twelve things over the year uh in different areas seven or twelve areas of my life that i want to work on um in the coming year so that is why it takes me a little bit longer so i will be sharing some of those things um as we get into the next session early next week uh, but i hope that's helped you and um just to remind you hi nick glad to have you on board just to summarize again this session just reflecting on the last 12 months what have been the things that you've been grateful for over the last 12 months and what have you learned what has been your biggest learning point for the year and uh, how are you how are you using that learning to help you prepare for the coming year so that's it really there's so much more i could share but i know that you have things to do and i have uh, things to get on with as well but catch up with me next week and i will share my plans for the new year and look forward to hearing your plans for the new year as well so as we end 2016 this is the last stop and be grateful i want to say thank you again for being with me, for joining with me week after week, and for sharing your gratitude. And um, I look forward to joining you and uh, everyone else again in the new year. Thank you again. Your contribution by um, joining me really makes a difference and has helped me to achieve my goal for, for this year, which was to start these broadcasts and to continue consistently in them so thanks very much again and a love and light and blessings as you uh, step into the new year and look forward to achieving the things that you'd like to achieve in your life and um, please remember that i am available to help you to work with you on your journey of achievement whether that's um, in training uh, in particular skills areas whether that's in coaching or in mentoring don't hesitate to drop me a line um, off, off broadcast and uh, we can catch up and I will, will I would uh, willingly work with you on achieving your uh, your dreams aspirations and improving your efficiency in uh, creating the life that you want to live so take care for now and I look forward to joining you again Sandra Pollock from Open Mind Coaching saying bye for now take care bye bye